This presentation is brought to you by the Beljanski Foundation. Over 50 years of research towards curing cancer the natural way. Because, see, my talk's going to be pretty simple also. Think in terms of a couple simple terms. First is reboot, okay? The, think in terms of wound healing and that the body wants to heal itself. Okay? 1979, I'm chief surgical resident in a cardiovascular surgery program, operating with my favorite mentor, Dr. Jim. Okay? I finished that, and I started a solo cardiovascular practice near Kansas City, and I did that for 29 years. Okay? Halfway through that, I'm frustrated. Patients are finding alternative methods, they're on 20 meds, you know, I obtained a doctorate in natural medicine. So the second half of my private practice was cardiovascular surgery and I was doing alternative things on the side, particularly prolozone. So I'd done that for 29 years. I was single, my kids were grown, and Senogenics Medical Institute approached me and said, you wanna start an age management clinic on Wall Street in New York City for us? I'm off on another adventure, okay? So, with the age management, there's a balance, conventional and natural medicine that I offer. But the other thing I mentioned, and this is what will come out in this, is my experience. I trained before there were hospitalists. I had to do the preoperative preparation, I had to learn to do the surgical procedure, and I did post-operative care day in and day out afterwards, okay? Now, with that, I've operated or helped operate on every part of the body. I've taken care of wounds every part of the body. So that's part of my experience. Now with that, I come up to the Wall Street office, nice office, and I find out very soon with age management, body parts wear out. <laughs> I'm taking care of retired NFL and NBA players and some military special forces guys. They're 55 and they want to continue to serve our country, okay? I'm taking care of these people. I was doing a lot of acute and chronic orthopedic things because of my prolozone and then that's when I moved into stem cells for joint, re you know, for joint regeneration. But with the military experience, I've, had a, um, I've been able to do systemic treatments for many, many systemic conditions. Autoimmune conditions, traumatic brain injury. There's a whole slug of things that I've been able to do over the years. So part of what I'm telling you is my experience with all this and where I th it has led my way of thinking. The Spanish term for stem cells is cellulis madres, mother cells, perfect description. Now the thing I want you to remember, see that divide, grow, differentiate? It occurs over a period of about 90 days, okay? So just keep that in mind because that's gonna come up later. I've never used any embryonal tissue, it's illegal here, but from the fat on the way down to the umbilical cord, I've done all of that. I've been doing this for 12 years. So I've pulled out fat, I pulled out uh, bone marrow, got stem cells, the whole business. The last four years I've been using umbilical cord stem cells only. There was a article came out in the European literature that patients that were treated within 15 days following an acute MI or stroke, if they were treated with stem cells, there was actually regeneration of heart tissue and nerve tissue, okay? Wound healing. So you look at this, the body just wants to heal itself, all right? So let's do measures to help the body do it. It's gonna do better than with any chemical I can give it. Autoimmune. Just get the cells rebooted and functioning properly. Stem cells and exosomes have an excellent, and I'll give you an example later, but excellent anti-inflammatory response. That's how they mainly deal with the autoimmune diseases. So I, I go through all this, and 12 years ago I'm starting to do stem cells, and I say to myself, okay, first do no harm. Okay, here's where we're at. There's no tissue reaction. Stem cells are immune privileged. There's no cancer risk. So the main risk is I've got to stick a needle into a joint or give an intravenous infusion. 
I'm a heart surgeon. <laughs> There's no big deal, <laughs> you know? So at this point, this is some of the things I've learned doing this. First of all, I may not want your stem cells. You're 40 years old? Mm-mm. You've had an autoimmune condition for 20 years? Uh-uh. Umbilical cord stem cells. That's where I'm at right now. Second lesson, is your human machine optimal for healing? This is a key one right here. All right? We all do this stuff here, all the doctors, okay? And I'll give you an example. See the hormone balance? Okay. I have an 83-year-old gal with MS, and we're trying to keep her independent where she can live at home. She comes in with her walker. Okay. All right. I started on testosterone, and I put her through physical therapy. And six weeks later, she comes in without the walker, okay? This gal had terrible neuropathy where she was taking eight oxycodone a day, all right? At that point, see, we did that part, got her body ready, did the stem cells. A month after the stem cells, I asked her how many pain pills you're taking. She says, I haven't taken any for a week, okay? So that's the kind of response we were getting. You know, true health is just proper metabolism. The cells are working like they're supposed to. And I'm going to give you two examples. They're very subtle. Most people would ignore this, but I will tell you, in my experience, it's very significant. 55-year-old guy goes in for his annual physical. And the doc says, hey, you got to lose a little weight. And, oh, your cholesterol's up. Here's a pill. Okay. Other side of the fence. Cholesterol is a precursor for making testosterone. It's a precursor for making vitamin D. If these are suboptimal, and I'm not talking about any absolute number values, if they're suboptimal for that individual, cholesterol goes up. You optimize, cholesterol comes down without any medication. Which patient metabolically is going to do better in the long run? And this is what I found with the process that I do with stem cells. I've used light and oxygen to help stimulate wound healing. Light is interesting because a lot of that technology is uh, Russian, 1970s but the circadian rhythm, and I will tell you this, my experience as a surgeon, you make a wound on a patient early in the morning, they heal faster. There's something there, okay? And certain wavelengths of light will stimulate nitric oxide production. You do that while you're giving stem cells, boy, I, it's amazing what results that I've seen with that. So I come down after 12 years, and I don't have a routine, you come in, you get your stem cell injection and goodbye, no. There's a plan, preoperative, with the stem cells afterwards. There may be a lot of adjunctive treatments to help improve as far as the wound healing. Now I'm going to point out, see the nutrition? That's always there with everything, right? Dr. Gundry is going to be talking. He makes a statement in that Plant Paradox book that the FDA made a statement that the nutritional value of the soil in this country is nearly depleted or depleted at this time. Okay, so that's one of the very few books that you look at and you got two apples. And he points out the difference of where did the apple come from rather than just talking general nutrition about an apple. That's very significant. And the other thing is that FDA statement in his book, 1936, where do we stand today? I wanna just talk a bit about NAD and exosomes related to Stem cells and autoimmune, okay? NAD, now you go back to middle school biology, the Krebs cycle. That's the way the body makes energy. If a cell makes a normal level of energy, it functions normal. If it doesn't, you get a degenerative condition, chronic condition, cancer, okay? <laughs> NAD is, it, it, it's an enzyme, a coenzyme that helps move that cycle along, all right? NAD depletes with age. After the age of 50, you have had a significant depletion of your original levels of NAD. If you have chronic alcohol use, it's even lower. Now, think about this one. Somebody with a chronic neurodegenerative condition, what they do, their cells dump out all the NAD. There's your neuropathy, all right? So, what you're looking at is what is the importance of that NAD? Um, I've got a gal, she's, I've had her for a patient for six months. She's 17 years old, 
And two years before I first saw her, she had a viral encephalitis. Okay, subsequent autoimmune, all kinds of stuff going on. To the point where she used to be a star athlete, she could hardly even walk to go to school. She couldn't take stairs because her legs began to tremble and she couldn't take it. So she came up for stem cell treatment, all right? So here's the program. She comes in and I give her intravenous NAD, intravenous NAD, intravenous NAD, then stem cells, okay? All right, giving her the NAD, she was excited to be in New York City and I'm gonna go to the Empire State Building and I'm gonna see the city at night, okay? The next day I saw her for her next treatment and how would that go? And she goes, that was so much fun. She says, there was that little flight of stairs at the very top to get to the top level. And I took that whole flight of stairs without any problem. And she hadn't done that for two years. And then she went down to Times Square and they walked all over. And she says, I haven't been like that. Now see, this is transient. It's a, you know, it's an improvement. You're filling up that NAD gas tank is what you're doing. But that's the significance of the NAD and the comments I've gotten back from people. My hearing's better. I taste food now. My sight's better. Your cells are just working better. So this is a real key. And this, I'm just going to mention this because if you look at this, see the little reaction, hydrogen ion? Most of the water we have is useless, okay? Really look into this hydrogen water. It's on the right track. It really is. And it's biologic. It's scientific. Exosomes. Here's a cell, and you see this little lysosome. The lysosome is an endosome. It contains growth factors, messenger RNA, and sometimes those things will extrude out through the cell and be in the general circulation. Then it's an exosome. The exosome contains all those little things in it as it goes around. That's how the body transports it around, and it's surrounded by an impermeable membrane. Okay, So there's an exosome. So the exosomes contain just a good variety of all kinds of bioproteins. Let me show you an example of an anti-inflammatory property. Maggie underwent NAD stem cells and for two months showed continued improvement on her neurologic status. Two and a half months out, her dad calls me and says, neurologic symptoms are getting worse. Okay. 90 days, divide, grow, differentiate. I see this consistently in my patients, just a consistent. It's the cells regenerating, all right? So what do you do about it? NAD helps, but she came in, 100 billion exosomes. Next day, 100 billion exosomes. Symptoms gone. That's the kind of anti-inflammatory effect that I see with exosomes and stem cells. I mention just peptides. I'm not going to get into any detail, detail, but this one here, there's evidence it lengthens telomeres. You lengthen your telomeres, you're biologically younger. I just throw that out at you to look at. Now, here's a challenge. If you're 50 years old, you need to invest in yourself. You, if, even if you're not on any medications, you get a telomere measurement. You go through IV NAD, you go through IV exosomes and stem cells, you take a course of epitalon, and a year later you get a telomere measurement. That's going to tell you. Now you're going to have to figure it out for yourself if you think that's right or not. But I'll tell you also, if you're a doctor and you do this, three months out, even while, while you're waiting to get your telomeres to see the objective evidence, you're going to feel so good, you're going to say, I need to do this with my patients. So you think about this. Somebody who has an autoimmune condition and 20 symptoms, all right, why don't we just reboot their cells, get them working better, and reassess whatever's left over, then we pick up and that's our treatment plan, okay? How about somebody with cancer, all right? They've been discovered with cancer. Do they go through all the chemo and everything and all the treatment? Or do they go through a rejuvenation program and a, a, a circulating tumor cell test to, to monitor whether there's any circulating tumor cells. These are things that I look at, you're just making the body, you know, ready to go. So this is all wound healing, and I'm sorry, this, this, this bothers me, I heard, I'm affected by this, but I gave a patient a treatment yesterday. I'm cleaning up the office to go home and practice my talk and everything for today. 
Maggie's latest lab work. All of her rheumatology stuff six months ago, a lot of things off the board. Everything normal today. That's why I do this. Thank you.